Assalamu alaikum everybody. Today we'll be looking at Campylobacter jejuni. But before getting into the video, I'd like to tell you guys that these videos are meant for educational purposes. Things and treatments may change with time. If I get wrong or miss anything, your input is always welcome in the comments section. Grab a pen and a notepad and let's get started. Campylobacter jejuni. It's a gram-negative broad. It has got two words in it. Both are Greek words. The first one is campylo, that is from Greek campylos, that means curved. And the second one, bacter, that's from Greek bactron, which means rod. So this bacterium is curved and rod shaped. Campylobacter duginae is microaerophilic. It means that it grows best in 5% oxygen rather than in 20% in the atmosphere. It is a flagellated bacterium which makes it immortal. It belongs to the Campylobacteriaceae family and is the antecedent of Coulin Valley syndrome. As in this picture, you can see this S shaped, curved shaped, rod shaped Campylobacter duginae. Campylobacter duginae is responsible for causing Campylobacteriosis. That's just a broader term that any infection caused by this bacterium will be this one. But it actually causes enterocolitis, diarrhea, but if this infection becomes a systemic infection, it is bacteremia. Campylobacter duginae is oxidase positive. It is non-fermenting, which means it does not ferment lactose or glucose. It grows better in 5% oxygen and grows well in 42 degrees Celsius temperature. It is sensitive to nalidixic acid. We've got two species of Campylobacter. The one we're discussing in today's video, the Campylobacter duginae, and the other one, Campylobacter intestinalis. But before talking about Campylobacter duginae in detail, we should know how the bacteria are classified. Bacteria are classified into spirochetes, acid fast based on acid fast staining, and there's an exception that's a macroplasma bacterium. And all cell bacteria are classified based on gram staining into gram positive. We are done with all the gram-positive bacteria. If you guys are interested, be sure to check out the channel. And bacteria are also classified into gram-negative. Gram-negative are further subdivided into cocci, which is Neisseria, the Neisseria gonorrhoeae, and Neisseria meningitidis. And rods, which include aerobic, like Pseudomonas, anaerobic, like bacteroids, and facultative. Facultative is further subdivided into curved, which includes Campylobacter, the topic of today's video, Helicobacter, and Vibrio cholerae. I've got videos on them, be sure to check them out. And also, the facultative is further subdivided into straight, which is further subclassified as respiratory, like Haemophilus, Bodytella, Legionella, also as zoonotic, which includes Brucella, Francisella, Pasteurella, and Ursina, and also into enteric and related, which includes E. coli, Enterobacter, Serratia, Clapsella, Salmonella, Shigella, and Proteus. But that's not all. Gram negative bacteria are further subdivided based on different shapes into diplococci, cocobacilli, rods, and comma shapes. Diplococci are further subdivided based on maltose fermentation. If a bacterium ferments maltose, it's Neisseria meningitidis. And if it doesn't, it's Neisseria gonorrhoeae. Cocobacilli include Haemophilus influenza, Brucella, Pasteurella, Bordetella pertussis. Rods are further subdivided based on lactose fermentation. If bacteria ferment lactose, that are going to be fast or slow fermenters. Fast ones include Klebsiella, E. coli, and Enterobacter, and slow ones include Serratia and others. And non-lactose fermenter are further subdivided based on oxidase test. If a bacterium is oxidase positive, it's Pseudomonas, and if it's oxidase negative, it's Shigella, Salmonella, Proteus, Yersinia. Comma-shaped bacteria are further subdivided based on certain criteria. Like if a bacteria produces urease, it's Helicobacter pylori. If it grows in alkaline media, it's Vibrio cholerae. And if it grows in 42 degrees Celsius temperature, it's Campylobacter duginae. Lecture outline. We are done with the introduction and classification. Now we'll be looking at morphology, habitat, transmission, Pathogenesis, clinical findings, lab diagnosis, treatment, prevention, and at the end, as usual, we'll review the lecture. Morphology. Campylobacters are curved gram-negative rods that appear either comma or as shaped. There's an exception like these bacterium, the Campylobacters become cocoid when they're exposed to certain conditions, like exposed to atmospheric conditions. 
can Pilobacter GG9 varies in size from 0.5 to 5 micrometers by 0.2 to 0.9 micrometer. It is pink colored. The reason is it's gram negative. As in this picture, you can see the curved, comma shaped Campylobacter jejuni. Campylobacter is an encapsulated bacterium. It is not responsible for forming spores, it is motile. The reason is it has got a flagella. It produces certain toxins, the enterotoxins and cytotoxins. This is how Campylobacter jejuni looks like under the microscope S shaped, curved, comma shaped, and rod bacterium. Habitate. Humans are its definitive host. The reason is it causes infection in humans, small and large intestines. Domestic animals such as cattle, chickens, and dogs serve as a source of the organism for humans. Transmission. Transmission is usually fecal oral and also by consuming water and food contaminated with animal feces and consuming food like poultry and meat that's undercooked or unpasteurized milk. There are two types of transmission. Number one, human to human, that's less frequent, and animal to human, pathogenesis. Campylobacter jejuni uses proteases, these are the enzymes, to disrupt cell junctions. The membrane-bound protein fibronectin is the binding site for Campylobacter jejuni, the critical binding site. Once inside the epithelial cells, the Campylobacter jejuni leverages gynein, to, this is the protein, to access the perinuclear space within the clathrin-coated vesicles. This allows the bacterium to avoid lysosomal digestion for up to 72 hours. This enhances survival and persistence of bacterium within the host. The Campylobacter jejuni bacterium releases enterotoxins and cytotoxins, and these contribute to inflammation and diarrhea. Inflammation of intestinal mucosa often occurs that is accompanied by blood in stool. Flagella facilitates the motility, biofilm formation, and host interactions. Campylobacter jejuni navigates toward favorable environments using chemotaxis. Systemic infection occurs in neonates and debilitated adults. Clinical findings. Enterocolitis caused primarily by Campylobacter jejuni begins with a watery, foul-smelling diarrhea that is followed by bloody stools accompanied by fever and abdominal pain, and that's severe. And there's also headache, nausea, and vomiting. Systemic infections, most commonly bacteremia, are caused most often by Campylobacter intestinalis, the symptoms of bacteremia, like fever and malaise, are associated with no physical findings. Complications. We know bacteremia, the systemic infection, is going to be one of them. Then the gastrointestinal infection caused by Campylobacter jejuni is associated with goulin barre syndrome, the most common cause of acute neuromuscular paralysis. goulin barre syndrome is an autoimmune disease attributed to the formation of antibodies against Campylobacter jejuni that cross-react with antigens or neurons. Infection with Campylobacter is also associated with two other autoimmune diseases, the reactive arthritis and Vater's syndrome. Miscarriage is also one of the complications. Lab diagnosis. We'll need the samples of feces and blood. Then we'll go for gram staining. On gram staining, Campylobacter jejuni comes to be gram negative because it's pink colored. If you guys want to know more about gram staining, I do have videos on them. Be sure to check out the channel. And then we'll go for microscopy. Under microscope, Campylobacter jejuni is curved, comma shaped, corkscrew or S shaped bacterium. It varies in size from 0.5 to 5 micrometers by 0.2 to 0.9 micrometer. It is pink colored. This is how it looks like under the microscope. If the patient has diarrhea, a stool specimen is cultured on a blood agar plate that contains antibiotics that inhibit most fecal flora. But there are certain conditions that are provided to the agar plate. The plate is incubated at 42 degrees Celsius in microaerophilic atmospheric conditions containing 5% oxygen and 10% carbon dioxide that favors the growth of Campylobacter jejuni. It is identified by failure to grow at 25 degrees Celsius temperature, oxidase positivity, and sensitivity to nalidixic acid. Unlike Shigella and Salmonella, lactose fermentation is not used as a distinguishing feature. If bacteremia is suspected, 
a blood culture incubated under standard temperature and atmospheric conditions will reveal the growth of characteristically comma or S-shaped mortal gram-negative rods. Identification of organisms as Campylobacter intestinalis is confirmed by its failure to grow at 42 degrees Celsius temperature, its ability to grow at 25 degrees Celsius temperature, and its resistance to nalidixic acid. Treatment will go for rehydration therapy because there is dehydration. We'll go for infusion of water and electrolytes. We'll go for erythromycin and ciprofloxacin for the infection caused by Campylobacter duodeni, and aminoglycoside for the infection caused by Campylobacter intestinalis. Prevention, proper sewage disposal and personal hygiene like proper hand washing can help prevent the infection. Avoid drinking unpasteurized milk or untreated water. Avoid eating undercooked poultry products like properly cooking them and then eat them. And there's no vaccine to prevent the infections caused by Campylobacter. Alright guys, let's review everything really quick. The organism we discussed today is Campylobacter duodeni. It is responsible for causing diarrhea, enterocolitis, gastroenteritis, and there are certain complications like bacteremia, boulain barre syndrome, reactive arthritis, and Brita syndrome. Transmission is via fecal oral route and is transmitted via eating or consuming water or food contaminated with animal feces, by consuming undercooked food, by consuming unpasteurized milk. Hosts are humans and domestic animals like cattle, chickens, and dogs. Diagnosis is based on gram staining, microscopy, and culture. Treatment will go for rehydration therapy, erythromycin, and ciprofloxacin in case of infections caused by Campylobacter duodeni and aminoglycoside for the infections caused by Campylobacter intestinalis. And that's it for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. You've learned something. If you guys have got any suggestions, feel free to leave them below in the comments. And if you want to connect with me on my socials, I've got my Instagram with the handle medzukhov and also Twitter. And I'll catch you in the next video. Till then, assalamu alaikum.